I'm Eric Johnson and I'm here today with Charles Lebo. Charles is the Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Kindred. And uh, Charles was here recently as part of a CISO workshop. Uh, it's an NSF funded workshop uh, as part of a project called Trustworthy Health and Wellness. And uh, we spent a day together uh, with a number of different CISOs talking about some of the challenges of data and security. And uh, so it's just great to have Charles here today to be able to sit down and talk about that a little bit. Well, thanks, Eric. It's, uh, it's great to be here. So data is a natural byproduct of care delivery. And when I think about Kindred, 100,000 employees delivering care in 46 states, that's just an enormous amount of data that's being created. And with advanced analytics, uh, some interesting promise on the horizon. How are you thinking about analytics? Well, you were right. We have a lot of data. With 100,000 employees uh, and four lines of business, 2,700 locations, there's a, a lot of data always coming in. We have, uh, it's always about the after the hospital. You know, you go to the regular hospital and you end up in hours. And we have a, a contact center that yeah. takes in a lot of phone calls um, across the country. People are asking for advice and how we move patients from one line of business to the other, whether it's from a short-term care hospital, you know, your regular hospital you see around, you know, all over town, to a long-term care hospital. And you might be in our hospital for many weeks, months, and sometimes you go to a nursing center, and then you go from a, to a rehab center, uh, one of our rehab locations, or you go to a long-term care like hospice or home health. Um, so that, the contact center tries to help people understand how to go from place to place, but they have to do analytics to understand what's the best opportunity for the people calling in for their relatives. And of course with all that data then we have the security issue that we've been talking about right. in the workshop and what are some of the big security issues that you worry about, things that Kindred faces? Well the one the sure amount of data is how do you protect all the data that we have. Um, there's increasing uh, opportunity to or increasing requirements to retain it for long, long periods of time. Well, and it just grows and grows. Storage is too cheap. We can keep so much of it, and there's never pressure to get rid of it. And the problem is, is trying to protect all of it. You're not just trying to protect the most important current information. You're also trying to protect information that you've had for 20 years. So how do you, how do we get rid of it? How do we purge it? How do we uh, keep it from becoming a problem over time? Bad guy gets in. Bad guy can steal it if it has it. If we don't have it, he can't steal it. Uh, then you have the interoperability of things and the way things are now, there are increasing linkages between systems. Uh, there's been recent attacks around uh, uh, like some of the websites a couple months ago where bad guys attacked uh, using webcams, printers, and, uh, oh, man. That's and, crazy. and thermostats and printers across the country. In fact, across the world, and they attacked various data centers of, of support systems for the websites. They didn't go after Netflix, they went after the support systems that made it, make it work. How do we prevent not just protect our data center, how we protect the companies that support our data center. So what are some of the types of threats that worry you the most? Right now the one that worries me probably the most is mailboxes and the amount of data in your mailbox. Yeah. For instance, you know, if you have a Yahoo or Gmail account, how, how much data, how, how long have you had it? Have you ever deleted things out of it? I, for instance, have had my Yahoo account for 18 years. <laughs> Up until about a month ago, I hadn't deleted anything out of it. So I had social security numbers, tax records, I had my daughter's birth, you know, social security number, everything, all of my history, all the way back to grad school sitting in it. And I went and decided I wanted to delete it all. Just last week, Yahoo announced they had a billion accounts compromised. Yeah. So bad guys are getting into mailboxes and they're analyzing the data in them yeah. and then using that as, as uh, opportunities for, you know, breaches for later on. Sure. And with 100,000 employees, that's a lot, of, a lot of mailboxes, a lot of data out there. Yeah, because it's not just personal mail, it's yeah. also business mail. How much yeah. mail do we have in our mailboxes? And if people don't, if they're not required to get rid of their data, they just keep it. And they keep it and keep it and keep it. And then we have to store it. We have to protect it on multiple levels. And it's always available in their mailbox. Yeah. Now, one of the threats that came up today in the workshop was really around this notion of um, security of the patient care system itself. So not so much the data, but the care system. Um, what are the kinds of things that, that could happen there? What, are, what worries you in attacks on the patient care system? So right now we're seeing a lot of ransomware and everyone's always concerned about, you know, well, what, how are you protecting? I'm always asked by my board, how are we protected from ransomware? And my concern is not, and where ransomware is important, my concern is not so much about the ransomware of today, it's what's going to happen next. For instance, uh, we could see where patients are now held hostage, you know, or, or health systems are held hostage by um, potential 
death to their patients. In other words, the, the bad guy will figure out a way to kill the patient. And by doing so, they, will, uh, they can sit there and ransom or hold hostage the health system under that threat. Yeah, and that's, that's the kind crazy. of thing that I worry about. How do we prevent that? What are the, some of the things that we need to buy or some of the things we need to implement to prevent that from happening before it happens, not just as we respond to ransomware or other companies respond to ransomware now? Yeah. Well, of course, I, I get to meet a lot of executives like yourself, and I always ask them to share a, a leadership question, a leadership kind of idea, something they learned in their history of working and leading different organizations. And I think in security, it's particularly interesting because you have uh, a very large organization that you're, you know, folks that directly report to you, and then also the broad organization that you're trying to protect. So I'm interested in a leadership lesson that you've learned along the way. Good question. Uh, the one I would probably put out there is, uh, is one I'm still struggling with, and that is the balance between going fast and building consensus. Yeah. So how, do we, how does security avoid the stereotype where they just push things without regard to how it impacts people trying to actually take care of patients? But at the same time, we're pressured to figure out how to protect patients in a very fast-moving attack situation. And so um, how do we implement change without necessarily impacting the patients but we've got to go faster, and so try, I'm trying to figure out how to balance that. Yeah, that's the that's the probably the one I'm struggling it, it, with the most. The influence and, and just the, all those people that are out there in the system that need to be brought along on a decision, but sometimes the decision can't wait. Right, exactly. That's great. Yeah. Well, Charles, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you having me.